Welcome to the show. Crime, including violent crime, is up in six big cities. What do these cities have in common, you might ask? Have you ever noticed those who are most offended by cultural appropriation don't seem to ask the supposed victims of cultural appropriation whether or not they are offended? And what do Larry Elder and the great James Brown have in common, aside from the fact that they speak of themselves in a third person? And a message for all the so-called friends that you and I have lost because we voted for Trump. Boy, do we have a great show today. But first, I know you guys are liking the giveaways, and this time it's going to be the best one yet. Are you ready for this giveaway? I want to invite you to join me for dinner at one of my favorite restaurants. That's right. You heard me. Fine dining with the great Eldersky. We can talk about anything you want, and I'll answer all your questions. Well, mostly all of your questions. It'll be a great time for sure. So hurry up and go to winlarry.com to sign up. I'll be announcing the winner live on February 22nd, so make sure to stay tuned. And last but not least, a big thank you to everybody who joined the giveaway for the mug. I'm talking about this Larry Elder mug. And you better use it every time you watch the show. I know where you live. Now for today's episode. My first guest and I will discuss the airborne objects being shot down. The 2020 election, the so-called January 6th insurrection, the Hunter Biden laptop story, the disappointing, at least for Republicans, 2022 midterms, and his prediction for 2024. Now, former Republican Representative Adam Kinzinger, who voted to impeach President Trump and who served on the House January 6th committee, said this, and I'm quoting him. The only thing we need for democracy to survive is a knowledge that you can vote, that your vote counts, and that we live with the winner and loser. If half the country believes that wasn't accurate, you can't expect democracy to succeed, end of quote. Where was this concern about election deniers when Democrats complain about stolen elections? For example, 2018, Democrat Stacey Abrams claims she lost her Georgia gubernatorial race due to voter suppression. A USA Today fact check said there is little empirical evidence that her opponent stole the election, end of quote. Former VP Al Gore in a Washington Post interview two years after his defeat to George W. Bush said, quote, I believe that if everyone in Florida who had tried to vote had had his or her vote counted properly, that I would have won, end of quote. Did anybody call him an election denier? In January 2001, several House Dems voted against certifying the election results of 2000. Representative Maxine Waters said in a joint session of Congress, quote, the objection is in writing, and I do not care that it is not signed by a member of the Senate, as, by the way, it's necessary to force a Senate vote on the challenge, end of quote. Had Ohio in 2004 gone to Democrat John Kerry, he would have become president. President George W. Bush carried it 51 percent to 49 percent. That's a margin of about 100,000 votes. But January 6th Committee Chairman Benny Thompson, at the time, on January 6, 2005, joined 30 other House Democrats and Democrat Senator Barbara Boxer of California in refusing to certify Ohio's presidential election results, claiming, quote unquote, voter suppression. In addition to arguing, also with no basis in fact, that the Diebold voting machines were manipulated to reelect Bush. The Senate voted 74 to 1 against that challenge, though Senator Dick Durbin from Illinois voted against the challenge. He praised Boxer in 2005 for making it. Here's what he said. I thank her for doing that because it gives members an opportunity, once again, on a bipartisan basis to look at a challenge that we face, not just in the last election in one state, but in many states, end of quote. Does that make Durbin an, an, an election denier? Hillary Clinton consistently called the presidential election of 2016 stolen, her word, not mine, and then described President Trump as illegitimate, her word, not mine. Former President Jimmy Carter said in 2019, quote, I think a full investigation will show that Trump didn't actually win the election in 2016. He lost the election and he was put into office because the Russians interfered on his behalf, end of quote. New York AG Letitia James said, quote, she will never be afraid to challenge this illegitimate president, end of quote. Were they election deniers? And about the 2016 election, Former Obama Secretary of Homeland Security Jay Johnson testified under oath that while the Russians tried 
to manipulate voting machines, there is no evidence that a single vote tally was changed. As to the effect of the Russian interference, Johnson said, there's no way of knowing whether the interference affected public opinion or the election outcome. Nevertheless, now get this, a 2018 YouGov poll found 66% of Democrats believe that Russia changed vote tallies to elect Trump in 2016. Again, no evidence that they changed a single one, yet 66% of Democrats believe that they did. A 2018 Gallup poll found 78% of Democrats believe that Russian interference in 2016, quote, changed the outcome of the election, close quote, in favor of Trump. So in other words, a greater percentage of Democrats believe 2016 was stolen than Republicans who feel the same way about 2020. That's half the country, but not the half that Kinzinger was referring to when he characterized the Republican Party as a party of election deniers. About the Hunter Biden laptop story. Former Obama CIA head James Clapper has now accused Politico of distorting the letter that he and 50 other Intel vets signed about the Hunter Biden laptop story. Clapper said the letter did not assert that the laptop was part of a Russian disinformation operation, something that Politico wrote in its headline. Clapper said this, and I'm quoting him, there was message distortion, Clapper told the Washington Post fact checker. All we were doing was raising a yellow flag that this could be Russian disinformation. Politico deliberately distorted what we said. It was clear in paragraph five, end of quote. Really? About the laptop's alleged contents, the letter said, quote, it has all the classic earmarks of a Russian in in disinformation operation, end of quote. And now Clapper is saying, we didn't say that. Well, here's what Clapper back then told CNN. Watch this. Obama. So, Director, a bunch of questions from this. Let me just start with this. How much does the source matter, right? So you hear the story of this laptop, we don't know a lot. We do know that the, the way that this information is getting out is through Steve Bannon and Rudy Giuliani. How much uh, do the, the, does the source matter here? Well, the source matters a lot, and, uh, and the timing matters a lot, I think. And to me, this is uh, just classic uh, textbook uh, Soviet-Russian uh, tradecraft at work. Uh, the Russians have analyzed the target. They understand that the president and his enablers uh, crave uh, dirt on Vice President Biden, whether it's real or contrived, that doesn't matter to them. And so all of a sudden, two, two and a half weeks before the election, uh, this laptop appears somehow, uh, without, and the email's on it without any metadata. Uh, it just, it's all very curious. But the, so here you have, uh, a willing target, and the Russians, who are very sophisticated about how to exploit a, a, a willing target, and uh, to me, that's it, what's at work here. No, I wasn't saying it was Russian disinformation. And by the way, he has security clearance. We don't. That's what gave him and the other so-called 50 former intel officials such credibility.